Hey everybody, Omar here, your host of Edge of South Africa, and I am back again with another fun-filled video, and I am here to answer the question, for those of you guys that are curious, why pay ridiculous prices for knives? Why bother? Um, and it kind of begs the question, what are you getting by going custom? And I think the best way to explain that um, is probably to understand how the whole process of each knife that's being made, whether it's a custom knife or whether it's a, a production knife, how do they make these things and what's the difference? Um, and this is just a general video for anyone that's trying to get into knives and maybe they want to learn a little bit more. And keep in mind, I am no expert. This is just me going off of my years of collecting and just enjoying this hobby. So, on with the video. So here we have the Zero uh, 900 Zero Tolerance Knife. Long since discontinued, this knife came out in 2007. They no longer make it. It's a beautiful, beautiful production knife. Um, one of my all-time favorites. I'm kind of sorry to see that they don't make it anymore. And then over here, we have one of my favorite folders that's exactly the same size, made by one of my all-time favorite South African knife makers, uh, Lawrence Prinsloo. And this guy does beautiful work. Uh, just spectacular. So, what am I getting and how do these knives get made and what's the difference and why am I paying so much money? Well, I think the best way to answer that is to understand how, how these knives are made. So the Zero Tolerance Zero 900. Um, and again, this is just my own um, personal opinion on how I think production knives are, are put together. Uh, a company like Zero Tolerance has a board of like knife experts who maybe it starts with the designer and in this case it's Les George he puts out a custom design probably probably uh, puts it out to zero tolerance they take a look at the design um, it's one of Les George's possible custom designs and what they do is they take the custom design and see if they can replicate it in the production world, or at least come up with a knife that looks like a custom Les George knife, but can they do it cost-effectively on an assembly line? So once they make that decision and they decide to go with a knife maker like Les, like Les George, uh, they will get the go-ahead. He signs on as a designer, as a collaborator, along with Zero Tolerance, and they get the go-ahead and the green light to create the knife. So what happens now is we have the knife put out, um, usually made out on an assembly line. Um, the knife is usually put together by several people. One guy puts one part on, another guy puts another part on, until at the end of the entire process, you've got a complete knife. And they do this several times uh, until they come out with the knife in mass quantities. Maybe they'll decide to put out maybe... I don't know, a thousand, maybe two thousand, maybe three thousand of the same exact replicated knife over and over and over again. And then once they do that, once they've once they've decided on how much they're gonna put out of the same exact model, then they're gonna stop. So that's the production world. And then obviously at the end of the production line, uh, there would be someone who's gonna inspect the work, uh, make sure that the centering looks good. You know, make sure that there's no flaws or all the screws perfect. Uh, just basically going over, you know, is the backspacer in the right place? Just basically going over and making sure that the end product is super perfect before actually being put in a box and shipped out to the customer. So for that... Uh, that's what you get with a production knife, and that process would cost you, as a customer, $270 for this knife right here, and you are getting an excellent product. There is nothing wrong with this product at all. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and it is seen as a high-quality tool. A high-quality tool. So that's my take on how production knives are made and what it is that you're paying for and what you're getting. Now, if we take, if we think about it, is every knife that comes out of a factory 
going to come out perfect? Probably not. Um, because these knives are being put out in mass quantities of, I don't know, 2,000, 3,000 at the time that these knives are heavily in production. And then they discontinue the knife and then it's, it's over. That's it. Um, that's basically, in a nutshell, the production world. Um, this knife, to, now we're going to focus more on the knife itself. So this knife runs on ball bearings. Uh, as you guys can see, it's very smooth, right? I mean, it it's just real, real smooth. Made of all titanium. It's got a G10 backspacer. Uh, the blade steel is S35VN. Um, really great, great steel. Uh, it's got a nice pocket clip on it. But everything on the knife, pretty much, it is what it is. There's nothing flashy on it. There's no special design. You know, you've got the Zero Tolerance logo on there, pretty much as your aesthetic. Um, maybe you may look at the knife and go, oh, nice pivot. Yeah, whatever. I mean, but you can certainly see um, George, if you know George, uh, Les George's design, you can certainly see his influence um, on this knife uh, as a collaborator of the creation of this knife, this production knife. So, that's what you're getting with uh, with a production knife. Now, over here, uh, we have a custom knife. Let me open this up because it's sort of a shame not to have that open when you're looking at it. Over here, we have a knife that's exactly the same exact size. Okay. Uh, now, how is this knife made? Well, this knife is actually what we would call a one-of-a-kind handmade order. So I would uh, go on a website of Lawrence Prinsloo, um, take a look at some of his knives and the model, and then I would contact him by email, and then I would discuss with the knife maker how I would like my knife to be made, complete with me deciding on the uh, materials to have the knife made. Uh, the look of the pivot would pretty much probably be my own decision. Um, the pocket clip, the backspacer, everything would pretty much be, I would have a hand in it somehow in the creation of the knife. Uh, and the knife in the end uh, would be considered a one of a kind handmade piece. So as I've said before, with this knife, they usually have an inspector who inspects everything on the knife, makes sure everything is perfect. You know, knife after knife after knife, he just sits there and he makes sure that everything is perfect. With this, it's a little bit, it's a lot different. Basically, it's a one-of-a-kind handmade piece, right? So in other words, this means that this is going to be the only knife that Lawrence Prince is ever going to make that looks like this. There will be another one ever. You'll never see another one like it ever again. You may see the same exact model shape, but that model knife will look completely different than mine in some way, even down to the uh, to the carbon fiber on it. Everything would be completely different. Everything would be completely unique. Um, as opposed to, say, a production world, uh, the guy who makes the knife does everything from start to finish. Now, on this knife, it's made on an assembly line. On this knife, Again, the knife is made from start to finish by the maker himself. He's the sole creator of this knife. Uh, he decides on how the look of the pivot's going to be. You know, along with you, you get to help him decide what kind of marble carbon fiber to use. Uh, what's the backspacer going to look like? Um, you pretty much have a hand in the creation of your own knife when you're dealing with uh, a custom knife maker should you get a one-of-a-kind handmade opportunity. Um... And then what happens is the knife maker also is the inspector. So the knife is going to go out to you, but it, it, he's going to have to inspect it. And it's going to have to be up to standards. It's going to have to be beyond perfect as far as that knife maker is concerned. Um, because this is a handmade knife. When I mean handmade, I mean there are no machines um, in the process of making this knife. And in a lot of... In a lot of uh, instances, and a lot of people don't realize this, the tools that they use to make the knife are made by them. In other words, this pivot here is quite unique. I don't know how Lawrence Prinsloo makes this pivot, but the tool 
that makes this pivot is made by him. So even the tools themselves that make the knives are made by hand. That's the kind of attention that you're getting. In other words, what they're doing is they are limiting the uh, possibility of anybody even trying to replicate this knife. It just won't be possible because even the tools that they, that they use to create the knife um, is made by them. Uh, so as you guys can see, this knife has beautiful sort of gold shimmering carbon, marble carbon fiber. The pivot on there really stands out. And you get eye candy on both sides of the knife. The pocket clip is uh, sort of bronze colored, really beautiful. Beautiful liners in same exact color. Um, just regular old titanium backspacer, which by the way could be customized to you if you wanted to have this in Damascus or in Timascus. He could certainly uh, do that for you as well. Um, so what's happening here is what you're getting by getting a custom is that you're going from the concept of I'm buying a high quality tool to I'm buying a high quality tool and a piece of artwork at the same time. Hence, the difference in price, um, $695 and $270. This was made for me, and this was done on an assembly line. It's as simple as that. Um, and the actions on the knife are quite different. I mean, if you guys can see, like I said, this knife runs on ball bearings. Look, it's pretty smooth, right? Stops midpoint, and then close it like that, right? So the actions will be different. So this one's on bone bearings. This one here runs on ceramic ball bearings. So if you take a look at this, see how that closes? Look at that. See how close it closes without me even having to force it. There you go. It just closes it by itself. Ceramic ball bearings, okay? Now, it's not just the ceramic ball bearings that are doing that. It's actually the maker himself doing that because he decides how much the tolerance of tightening the knife so that the smoothness of the knife represents him as a knife maker and him as a creator of this piece versus a production line where they probably have a a tolerance level for the smoothness of how the knife is supposed to uh, supposed to be. So I mean, if I disengage the if I disengage the frame lock, right, and I just hold it, you can see it doesn't fall shut. But that's not to say it's not smooth. It is smooth. I just have to give it a little bit of a jerk. Versus <laughs> my beautiful Lawrence Prince Lou, where I open it. And I don't do anything other than watch it fall and maybe twist my wrist to get it to close. I mean, that's that action there is just insane. The steels you are getting on these are completely different. They're also highly, you know, quite different. So this is S, uh, S35VN steel. And this one is M390. So again, even the steel is different. Um, yeah. So at the end of the creation of this knife, not only have do you have a beautiful knife, but you may have even made a friend. Because, uh, cause, you know, Lawrence Prince Lou, I had never met this man. Uh before, but, you know, and I, and we're not friends now, because I actually ordered this knife on the Blade Gallery, but if I had wanted this knife uh, made by hand, uh, I could just simply go on his website and get another one made for me, and, uh, you know, I, I probably would have been, you know, at least he would know who I am, he would know that I made, that he made a knife for me, and then I would always have contact with him to uh, make another knife again. So you're building relationships also. I mean, and not only that, but if something went wrong with this knife, I could certainly uh, contact Lawrence Prince Lou and tell him, hey, I bought this knife. This is one of your one-of-a-kind handmade pieces. I was wondering maybe you could fix the pivot because it's shaky. Um, I can't guarantee that with every custom knife maker, but I'm a South African knife collector, and every South African knife collector that I know stands behind their work. They would be so pissed 
if something on their knife uh, wasn't working for you and something on something you were not happy with, um, they would want to know about it and they would want to make sure that the knife is up to standards because their reputation is on the line. It's very, very important that they get their name out there, that they are someone who stands behind their work, who stands behind their art, and uh, just wants to make sure that they are having uh, or getting uh, very happy, happy customers. It's that, it's that simple. I mean, can I go to Zero Tolerance and say, look, man, this knife is, the frame lock is busted. Maybe, maybe not. There's only certain things that a, that a, that a company will do for a particular customer that buys their knife. Because uh, don't forget, this is made mass quantities um, over and over and over again. Um, and as time goes by, they may not even remember they even created this knife. So it's just something to think about. I mean, if, if you're in the production world and you're enjoying your production knives, that's fine. But now if you're looking to get a, in, in more, something more uh, of an experience, you may want to consider at least buying your first custom. Yes, customs are incredibly expensive. Um, but once you buy one, uh, the experience of buying one, uh, it's... I think that experience itself, meeting the knife maker, getting the knife made by hand, that whole entire experience, in my own opinion, is priceless. And you get to talk with the knife maker, you get to learn more about knives by talking to them, um, and, and it helps you grow as a collector. Uh, so it's something that you might want to think about if you're at a standstill in your knife hobby. Uh, collecting and maybe you've have you bought like way too many spider codes or way too many zero tolerances uh, you know whatever production knives you're into custom would be the way to go um, ask around check Instagram there are a ton of custom knife makers I can't say that they're all good uh, but a majority of the popular ones are excellent that's just my own opinion so Something to think about, $6.95, remember what you're getting, and then $2.70. Both are excellent knives. Both are, um, you know, fantastic for use. Um, but keep this in mind before I close out this video. Customs are not a necessity, right? Nobody's going to stand around and pay $700 for a knife. Um, it's a luxury item. It's an indulgent item. Uh, nobody really necessarily needs this. I mean, the word needs is actually probably a lot more closer attributed to this knife here, which is really one of my favorite all-time production knives. I love this one. It's just fantastic. And I'm kind of sorry they don't make it anymore. They did make this knife in gold and blue for a short time. I'm kind of sorry I didn't get that. Because um, you can go on eBay right now and buy one of these in blue or gold. And it's probably going to cost you about the same price as my custom. Uh, if you're going to ask me, is it worth it to do that? Just to get the knife in blue or gold? Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, and actually, this knife, if you were to find it on eBay, they're probably trying to sell it for like 400 maybe 450 just because it's discontinued. Same same answer, guys. Don't do it. I mean, you know, if you're lucky, maybe you'll find someone that's just looking to get rid of theirs. Uh, but if you're looking for a really good tool, yeah, the Zero Tolerance uh, Zero to, uh, Zero Tolerance 0900 is an excellent knife put out by Zero Tolerance. So, something to think about. Uh, custom world, production world. Um, both, you know, this one has a a custom knife maker's name attributed to the knife, but I don't think the, and, and the only thing that the knife maker um, contributed to it was just the design itself. He just gave the, the thumbs up to go ahead and make the design in a production on production level. That's all that, 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 that the the, uh, the custom knife maker did here uh, and signed on with ZT as a collaborator. Whereas this made completely by hand from start to finish uh, using custom tools. $6.95, $2.70, something to think about. This is Omar. 
uh, your host of Edge of South Africa. I hope I maybe opened up your mind a little bit as far as what this hobby is and what this hobby does uh, for you. Um, something to think about. Uh, myself, I am a knife connoisseur. I can't get away from it. Uh, it makes me nuts. I love this hobby. Uh, so until next time, I will see you guys uh, again here on the Edge of South Africa. I'm Omar, your host. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, happy knife hunting.